show your support, like, share and subscribe. Hello, I am That British Guy and welcome to my predictions video for WWE Stomping Ground. Time to take names and kick ass and kick ass and take names and whatever the hell they're calling it. It's a stupid name for a stupid show with far too many rematches. But that aside, we're going to do some predictions anyway. As per normal, if you put your predictions for the matches in the comments in this video, then you could get your hands on one of these little prize key rings. Congratulations to the winner of the Money in the Bank key ring, Lito Mito, Lito Mito. Unfortunately, with a lack of Twitter, we haven't been able to work out me sending you your prize. If anyone's got any ideas for how we can do that nice, safe and securely, please let me know. So yes, leave your predictions in this video and if you beat me, you will get a chance to win a key ring for Stomping Grounds. So let's get on with the predictions themselves. First match is the SmackDown Tag Team title match. Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan defending against Heavy Machinery. Obviously, this is Heavy Machinery's first pay-per-view match. They've only really just started having matches on SmackDown Live, and I think removing the tag team titles from Daniel Bryan would be a very bad move at this point. They probably will end up dropping them come, say, SummerSlam, something like that, a nice good kind of feel good moment for a big four show so maybe this feud will kind of drag out until then but for now I am going with the Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan win. Next up the other contender for which match will be on the pre-show. The triple threat match for the cruiserweight title Tony Nese defending against Akira Tozawa and Drew Gulak. Drew Gulak has had a couple of very nice showings on NXT recently and seems to be being a lot more kind of aggressive. Tony Nese with the belt just doesn't really seem to be clicking, I don't think. And Akira Tozawa has already held it and didn't really do anything with it. Kind of was a, a transitional champion, ended up passing it back very quickly. So I am going with a Drew Gulak win here. I also don't think there will be many other or possibly not any other title changes throughout the rest of the night. So this will be one way of giving the crowd a title change. So Drew Gulak for the win here. Going back to Smackdown and back to a tag team match. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, although technically Sami Zayn is raw I guess. Facing off against New Day members Xavier Woods and Big E. This is Big E's first pay-per-view match back since his injury. We haven't seen the New Day together on a pay-per-view for a very long time. It's all been about Kofi Kingston, obviously as WWE Champion. However, I think we still need to keep Kevin Owens quite strong as it looks like he may be slotting himself back into the number one contenders period now that we've gone away from Saudi Arabia. It's really the only reason that Dolph Ziggler was brought in. So I think Kevin Owens picking up the win here for him and Sami Zayn would be vital for kind of elevating him back to the top of the card on the heel side of things. New Day don't really need the win and we're going to need a few heel victories here. So I'm going with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Sticking with Smackdown still, we have Bayley defending the Smackdown women's title against Alexa Bliss and she will have Nikki Cross in her corner. This is just going to get far too muddled and complicated if we have Raw superstars winning SmackDown belts, even though this whole wildcard thing is still going on. I don't see that that would be beneficial in any way. I don't see Bailey losing to Alexa Bliss as being beneficial to her either, especially as they're trying to kind of reboot her character and make her seem a lot more kind of aggressive and badass. So immediately losing to the person who took the title off of her last time when they were both on Raw is a massive step backwards for me. 
Plus, if Nikki Cross potentially costs Alexa Bliss the match or something doesn't work there, then that can feed into whatever the hell storyline they're trying to tell between those two on Raw. So I'm going for a Bailey retention here. Bailey for the win. Right, let's actually talk about a Raw match, shall we? Sticking in the women's division, we have Lacey Evans taking on Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch again. I really can't see them taking the belt off Becky. They need her to be the cornerstone of the women's division on Raw. Giving it to Lacey Evans would just absolutely kill the entire division, I think. Nothing personal against her, but she is just not ready to be champion on that brand. Fairly straightforward with this one. Becky Lynch win to retain the belt. They've already killed the whole Becky two belts thing. They cannot make her Becky no belts this close after WrestleMania. Another Raw match. Samoa Joe defending the United States Championship against Ricochet. A match with no build whatsoever because it's only just been thrown together for this show. It probably will be one of the standout matches of the night, but has pretty much no heat going into it. Unless they do a surprise roll-up and then an angry face for Samoa Joe for being rolled up yet again, I cannot see them taking the belt off of him again so quickly. Obviously, they've had to do a bit of chop and changing with the whole Rey Mysterio thing now that he's injured. So kind of keeping the momentum going for Samoa Joe seems to be the most logical step. Keep the belt on him, let Ricochet have a very good showing, but ultimately fall short to Samoa Joe. So yes, Samoa Joe win here. Next up we have kind of an inter-brand match. Raw's Drew McIntyre taking on SmackDown's Roman Reigns, although you wouldn't know it because since moving over to SmackDown he has been on Raw every blooming week. Obviously they faced off at Wrestlemania, this is kind of more building tension between Shane and Roman, especially given what happened at Super Showdown, and given that 50-50 booking seems to be par for the course with this company, I am giving this win to Drew McIntyre, probably only really because of a Shane McMahon assist that keeps that boiling over and will probably culminate with something at SummerSlam I would assume and they can claim that it makes Drew McIntyre look strong even though he's probably only going to win because of Shane McMahon. And talking of rematches, how about a couple of rematches for the two main titles. First off we have Kofi Kingston and Dolph Ziggler in a steel cage match. That's got to be Kofi Kingston all day long. This will probably be where Dolph Ziggler then disappears. He's pretty much only been brought back in because nobody else wanted to go to Saudi Arabia. And he was happy to come back for some money. And then we have Seth Rollins taking on Baron Corbin again for the Universal title with a special guest referee who we still don't know who that is going to be. And again, I think we're going to have a Seth Rollins win. I think ultimately whoever the special guest referee is going to be will ultimately be redundant. We're probably not going to get a Brock Lesnar cash in either. It seems that they kind of try and drag that out. Maybe they can drag it out as far as SummerSlam. But this doesn't seem like the kind of pay-per-view that they would use that cash in on. They would rather kind of just hang that up in the air over both Seth Rollins and Kofi Kingston and chances are after all this he will end up cashing in on Kofi Kingston ahead of Smackdown Live's move to Fox. I'm getting more and more convinced of that as the weeks go on. So there we go, they are my predictions for Stomping Grounds, something to do with names and kicking and ass and something. Please let me know your predictions in the comments, and if you do manage to beat me, then you possibly could win yourself a nice free keyring prize, which I will send out to you when I am back from my holidays in a couple of weeks' time, beginning of July. But until next time, I have been That British Guy, and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.